The Enermax Liquitec TR42 all-in-one liquid CPU cooler has a massive contact plate made just for Threadripper and is rated for 500 watts of heat dissipation. High pressure PWM fans mount to rubber channels on the radiator to absorb vibration and the sexy logo and edge lighting on the block is addressable for syncing with your motherboard. It comes with an RGB control box too, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. What's up guys, hello and welcome to my launch review video on Intel's newest CPU, the Core i9-9900K. This CPU has been up for pre-sale for about a week and a half already, but aside from some dubious numbers that were posted by principled technologies, independent reviews such as mine today haven't been able to weigh in. TLDR though, this CPU is clearly the fastest one that you can buy for gaming performance right now. It is also no slouch when it comes to compute intensive tasks either, and that is thanks to it being the first 8-core 16-thread CPU available on Intel's mainstream platform platform, socket LGA 1151, and of course we got these new motherboards to go along with it with the Z390 chipset. I am sure this is going to become the go-to CPU for the highest end gaming systems that people put together for the next few months at least, but on the flip side, it is selling for $530 and up. And AMD has a very compelling and much more cost effective option to the 9900K in their 2700X, which also sports 8 cores and 16 threads and can be purchased today with no waiting on back orders or anything like that for $305 at least as of the prices I looked at earlier. But answering the most important questions about the 9900K is my goal today, so here's how I'm going to arrange things. First, we got some benchmarks, of course, where I will compare the 8-core 11-thread 9900K to the 6-core 12-thread 8700K, which costs $370 right now and is also a Coffee Lake 14 nanometer plus 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 base CPU. It's just got one less plus than the 9900K. And then, of course, uh, the best mainstream CPU that AMD has to offer, the 8-core 16-thread Ryzen 7 2700 X, which is based on the 12 nanometer Zen Plus architecture. Second, I will be answering the important question of which processor is the fastest, both for gaming and for CPU compute work. And finally, I will talk value because that is a very important part of choosing betwixt these processors. Before anything else though, I ran all these benchmarks within the past 48 hours or so. So let's take a look at my test bed configurations. Now the graphics card is one of the important parts here and I wanted to maintain consistency across all testing platforms. So for the graphics card, I have a GTX 1080 Ti I didn't want to throw in the 2080 or 2080 Ti quite yet. This is the 11G version though, not the 011G of the Asus Strix GTX 1080 Ti, which is an aftermarket design with a custom PCB. Uh, basically, this isn't overclocked as much as the O version, so the frequencies are 1493 base clock, 1607 boost, 1895 for the maximum frequency, and then on average it was hitting about 1820. For a CPU cooler, I have a 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. That's the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML. 240R. And then for uh, thermal paste, in case you're wondering, I'm using the Arctic MX4, which is a very popular paste. My 8700K is still running on this little tiny motherboard, which is an Asus Strix Z370-i Gaming. It is a mini ITX motherboard, but I'm only running the CPUs at stock frequencies for my tests today, so I wasn't too concerned about power delivery. For memory, for all of the systems, I'm using the exact same kit, which is a G-Scale Flare X kit, which is designed for AMD, but also works just fine for Intel. It's DDR4 3200 cast latency 14 and I'm using the XMP settings for all of the configurations. For the 9900K, the max frequency is gonna be five gigahertz on a single core, and then it will ramp it down from that depending on how many cores are being used. And the Maximus 11 Hero was a nice solid motherboard for the testing. And finally, for our AMD test bed, we have another Asus motherboard. This is the Asus Crosshair 7 Hero, another ROG board that's got the X470 chipset, same memory kit, and um, again, just XMP settings. Other than that, everything's running at stock. And now let's check out some benchmarks, starting off with Cinebench. This is the multi-thread test, and remember, of course, the eight core 16 thread CPUs are gonna have an advantage in multi-threaded tests. The 9900K scored over 2000 points, 2040 with the 2700X coming in about 11 or 12% behind with a score of 1805. Moving over to the single threaded test, and this is where the 8700K pre previously and now the 9900K have had an advantage, even more of a single core advantage now for the 9900K thanks to that five gigahertz single core clock speed. 8700K is gonna max out at 4.7 gigahertz on a single core at stock and then the 2700X will go up to 4.2 to 4.35 gigahertz on one or two cores with XFR 2.0. 
Ultimately though, the 2700X is still about 19% behind here. For CPU mark, overall score for the 9900K of 20,394, which beats out the 2700X by about 2,500 points or about 14%. And if we move over to the single threaded test, we can see the 9900K breaking 3000 with a score of 3024. And here coming in at a little over 25% faster single threaded than the 2700X. Next up is Blender. This is the Fishy Cat render, and here the 8700K and 2700X pretty much tie with pretty much equivalent scores, and that puts them both about 23% behind the 9900K score of 23.3. Remember, lower is better here. This is time in seconds. Here's another Blender test, the BMW 27 test, which takes a bit longer. The 9900K still had an impressive score of 216 overall seconds. 8700K came in last here with the lower core and thread count that eventually will lead to lower scores. So the 2700X surpassed it. It's still about 20% behind the 9900K, whereas the 8700K was about 30% behind. And here's my final CPU compute test for this round. This is POV Ray, which is a simulated ray tracing software, although not, a, not available with RTX on yet. And here the 9900K wins again with a time of 60.3 seconds. 2700X comes in second with 71.9 seconds or about 16% behind. And then the 8700K trail in in last place with 91.8 seconds. And that is about 35% behind the 9900K. Let's move into some gaming tests. Although 3D Mark is kind of a hybrid test because we have an overall score that combines multiple tests, graphics, as well as physics. So physics score here is the CPU compute performance. Graphics will show you how well the graphics card is performing when paired with this specific CPU. And remember, they're all the same graphics card we're seeing here. Here, the graphics tests are pretty much the same. The 2700X is trailing, but it's really only by a negligible amount. But we do see a big advantage for the 9900K in the physics test, scoring just shy of 25,000 points, uh, whereas the 2700X comes in with a 20,681. And next we have 3D Mark Time Spy, which is a direct X12 test. Here again, the overall scores are pretty much uh, similar to each other. They're all within a couple percentage points. Graphic score, the 8700K and 2700X actually did a little bit better than the 9900K, although again, just a couple percentage points, so that's pretty much negligible. CPU score was well over 10,000, actually just shy of 11,000 for the 9900K and 8,880 for the 2700X, so it wins there yet again. Moving on to an actual game. This is Rise of the Tomb Raider Direct X12 mode, and here I am testing at 1920 by 1080. I want to point out that I'm running these game tests at 1920 by 1080, specifically because that will actually take less of a strain off of the GPU and put it onto the CPU. That will tease out differences uh, between the CPU. But you should also bear in mind that if you're using a 9900K, you're probably not going to be gaming at 1080. Maybe you will, but most people are going to be gaming at higher resolutions than that. And it's very important to keep in mind if you're just looking at the gaming scenario and you're going to be playing at 1440 or 4K, you won't see differences in your gaming performance like we're seeing here. That said though, for Rise of the Tomb Raider though, we can definitely see performance improvement that is gained by pairing the GPU with the 9900K or the 8700K for that matter. So in this test specifically, the single core performance of both of those chips is allowing the GPU to outperform what the 2700X is capable of. And we actually see a much lower score of 125.9 frames per second versus the 160 frames per second or so of the 8700K and 9900K. That's about a 20% drop off. But again, this is a specific scenario that is teasing out more of a difference between the performance of the GPUs than we would normally see at high, higher resolutions. As you can see in our next game, Ashes of the Singularity Escalation, also at 1920 by 1080, the margin is much, much slimmer. Actually it drops down to about 2.8%, uh, with 2700X scoring 82.8 average frames per second and the 9900K coming in with 85.2. Again here, the 8700K is actually outperforming the 9900K, so this makes a point of if you don't need the extra cores for the 9900K, then maybe even the 8700K might be a nice sort of split the difference between what you get with the 2700X and the 9900K when it comes to terms of price. One more game test here though, and that is GTA 5. This is also running at 1920 by 1080. And here the 9900K does the best with a score of 164. We can even see it outperforming the 8700K. GTA 5 is a pretty well optimized game. 2700X is also scoring less here, 135 frames per second. So that brings it in about 17.7% slower than the 9900K. Still a decent drop off here, but again, this is a scenario that is specifically designed to show differences in performance when it comes to games. And if you were to play the same games at higher resolutions, you wouldn't see a performance difference like this. So now let's move to the second question, which is basically gonna be, can we sum up these performance tests and give a more direct answer of which CPU is faster in which situation? First 
off the CPU performance tests. And here I'm taking all of my CPU performance tests, Blender and so forth, as well as the physics tests from the 3D Marks. Then I'm taking all those numbers and doing math on them to give you guys a summation of the performance difference. The 9900K is the fastest in these tests, so that's representing 100% of the performance. And the 2700X comes in about 18.4% slower than that, uh, whereas the 8700K comes in about 22.7% slower than that. So here you can see the gradual drop off or somewhat gradual drop off when it comes to CPU compute performance. If I take just my gaming tests, and again, let me point out, this is worst case scenario gaming tests because I'm mainly focusing on 1080 performance. Even with that taken into consideration, we're about 11% behind the 9900K with the uh, 2700X. 8700K did much better here, and here we're only about 2.5% behind. So again, if your main focus is gaming, the 8700K might be a better or more economical choice for you than the 9900K. Of course, if the CPU compute stuff makes more of a difference to you, if you're gonna actually do some video editing or something like that, then the 9900K makes a little bit more sense. But it's not just about performance, and the third thing we gotta figure out is value. And for that, of course, we gotta check out the prices of these. I've already mentioned them, but just to reiterate, the 9900K currently pre-sailing on Amazon for 530 bucks. Newegg has it for 580 bucks because they're stupid. I don't know why anyone would buy it for $50 more when it's clearly available at Amazon. That said, uh, 8700K right now is 370, and the 2700X can be had for 305. That means that compared to the 2700X's price, you're paying 21% more for the 8700K for about five or 6% less performance when it comes to the CPU side. You're paying 73.8% more for about 22% more performance. So that's a pretty decent gap there as well. And then when it comes to graphics performance, you're paying again 73.8% more for the 9900K for 12.3% more performance, or 21% more performance for the 8700K for 9.5% more performance. So to kind of sum things up, the 9900K is a monstrously powerful CPU for someone who wants no compromises in a mixed use system. It's got the best gaming performance you could want, and it's got a lot of CPU compute horsepower too. That's all in a 95 watt TDP package that can slot into teeny tiny mini ITX boards, which is also very nice. Much like the recently launched RTX 2080 Ti though, you must pay a price premium for this level of performance, and that might not be justifiable given the very viable 2700X option. It's also worth noting, uh, that I can't currently speak to the Core i7-9700K or Core i5-9600K performance and values yet, as uh, those are six and eight core CPUs that are not hyper-threaded and they weren't sampled to press yet, as far as I know, so we'll have to wait and see on those. But if you've got the money and you want the best and spending over $500 on a CPU doesn't phase you, I can safely recommend the 9900K. If you're on a budget at all though, you could not pay 70% more for the 9900K and instead settle for about 20% less CPU compute performance and at the very worst about 10% fewer frames per second in your games. That's only if you're playing at 1080 and in that case the 2700X is definitely going to be the better bet. That's all for this video though guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs up button if you did and of course leave me comments in the comment section to let me know if you're going to buy the 9900K or wait for next year or wait for Cannon Lake or where the heck's 10 nanometer anyway. I'm getting distracted though. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.